I'm going to be looking into Deuteronomy 18, Deuteronomy 18, and I'm just going to go ahead and read through it. Um, I'm going to be reading straight from verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 1 says, The Levitical priests, indeed the whole tribe of Levi, are to have no allotment or inheritance with Israel. They shall live on the food offerings presented to the Lord, for that is their inheritance. Verse 2, they shall have no inheritance among their fellow Israelites. The Lord is their inheritance as He promised them. You see, um, I'm just going to stop there for a moment. So priests did not have an inheritance of the land. All the other tribes, all the 12 tribes of Israel had an inheritance, a portion of the land. But the priests did not. And you may be thinking, hey, that's unfair. You know, that is not right, God. Why, why does this happen? But the Lord says, their inheritance is in me. Their inheritance is in me, the Lord. And they had a, a, a special uh, place, a special inheritance in the Lord. They were to, to, uh, 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 they were to be supported by the Lord's people, the gift of the Lord's people. And the, the, is the Levites, so Levites are all the priests, the pastors, um, the, the worship leaders, equivalent of today's full-time um, salary staff, right? They would receive a portion of all the animals that were sacrificed, all the animals that were offered to God, and they were to be provided with the meat for food. You know this phrase, the Lord is our inheritance. Inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. What does that mean? It means this. It means that our hope, our trust, our sufficiency, our reliance is on God alone. And it's not in our abilities, not in our talents, but in God. And that's why the first thing I want to highlight is sufficiency. Sufficiency in God. And what that means is our physical needs, our emotional needs, they all come from God. And, and this is not to super spiritualize it, but that is true. You know, we, we allow the people around us to bless us. In the same way that I experience blessing, my, my wife and I, um, through this journey, um, you, you don't say to each other, hey, I earned this, I built this, I created this myself. You don't say that, but you allow each other to bless one another. And that's what they were, uh, they were doing then. That, that was, was what the priests did at that point of time. And I believe that there are many of us in cells here today, right? Uh, how many of you, you are part of a cell currently, right? Let me see a show of hands. Yeah, okay. Um, that's most of us here, right? And we attend cell, of course, we hear the Word of God, we, we impart to one another, we, uh, we, we share the Word, but also we care for one another. And I believe that during the pandemic, and now we are moving into the, the transition into uh, endemic stage, right? Many of you, <clears throat> many of you, you were able to connect with your cell because your cell was the people other than your family whom you basically have no choice uh, but to be with at home. And the other group of people are your colleagues, your, your workplace, your bosses, which you also, you know, you need to earn an income, right? But this is a place where you really receive blessing, you, you receive uh, uh, the friendship, and you are blessed not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually as well. You know, talking about this, how the priests were blessed uh, uh, in, in the full-time allocation for them, uh, allocation from God. So there was once I went for a church camp, and this is many years ago. This is probably like, what, 17, 18 years ago. I went for this church camp in, in uh, the church that I came from in Penang, and I remember the, the panelist uh, was talking about finance, was talking about the future, and uh, somebody asked him, um, what, uh, how much money do I need in order to go full-time? And this person on the panel, well, I think he should be a pastor, but at that time, he was a, 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 what do you call it, a partner in one of the big four audit firms, the accountancy firms, right? And his answer was this. He said, do you know, if the Lord has called you into full-time ministry and you are sure and, and you know, you've got confirmation from your leaders, from your pastors, just go. The Lord will provide for you. 
And I was amazed by that answer. And, and, and at that time, I was not even thinking of full-time ministry. You know, once we begin to count and, and like, you know, calculate, you will never be enough. It, you know, you can never have enough. But that is why we are supposed to trust in the Lord, right? And, and that is what uh, he gave the answer about. Um, our sufficiency must be fully and completely in the Lord. All right, so that's the first thing I want to highlight, sufficiency. I want to move down to verse 3. And let's read in, in verse 3. It says, This is the share due the priest from the people who sacrifice a bull or a sheep, the shoulder, the internal organs, and the meat from the head. You are to give them the first fruits of your grain, new wine and olive oil, and the first wool from the shearing of your sheep, for the Lord your God has chosen them and their descendants out of all your tribes to stand and minister in the Lord's name always. So the priest, what they would do is they would take a share, a portion of the sacrifice of the people. And, and this is not wrong because what the, priest, what the people did is that they would bring their tithes, their offering, uh, their sacrifice. And because the priest or, or the people in, in, in working in the temple, they do not have a portion. Remember, the Lord said, I am your portion. And the, the people uh, used to give their tithe, their offering. The priest could take out of that offering. And from just a normal sacrifice, the priest would receive a part of that animal that was sacrificed. The rest of the animal, it would either be burnt in, in the offering or it would... Return, be returned to the person that gave that offering to God in the first place. It would be like a fellowship meal unto the Lord. And that was what was happening in those days. So the priests also received the offering or, or the first fruits of the people of God. And they all had a share of the sacrifice, the share of the gifts and sacrifice that was given by the people um, uh, and, and everything that the people gave to God, that it was given to, to, pre, to the priest who was paid a salary. And let me highlight uh, something. Uh, let me go back to the book of Leviticus, actually, where uh, it said in Leviticus 7, and I think it's going to be on screen, in verse 32, it says, you are to give the right tie of your fellowship offerings to the priest as a contribution. The son of Aaron who offers the food and the fat of the fellowship offering shall have the right tie as his share. Amen? So, you know, it's not about paying our salary. And I say our because I'm in full-time ministry. And um, I know this doesn't happen here, but I've heard in some churches, there are some people who go, hey, you must follow what I do because I pay your salary. But it's actually written in the Bible because um, the, the priest had the inheritance of God, of that, that portion. But that, the fact of the matter is that portion of tithes, that portion of offering, it actually belongs to the Lord. You know, for myself, um, having been in full-time ministry and it's been nine years, some days I can't believe it myself, it's been nine years, I still think, hey, I'm too young. La. I'm still a little bit too young. I'm, I'm 35, uh, going on 36. I thought I would be maybe another 10 years in, in the marketplace, in the workforce. Then I would go into, into full-time ministry. Um, you know, maybe if I worked a little bit longer in the marketplace, then I would carry some weight. Then, then I would, uh, you know, uh, have something to say, garnered more influence, right? But I believe that the Lord has been faithful to me, even in very small ways. And I want to share this example because it, it literally just happened last week. It's a very s small, simple example. So last week, um, the whole of the Workplace at the River uh, ministry, and I see a couple of our core here, uh, Workplace at the River Church Plan, sorry, uh, was here, uh, was at a, a retreat. And we needed to chip in for that retreat, right? So it's, it's just a small uh, amount that we needed to, to chip in. But my bank account was dry. And by the way, this doesn't normally happen, okay? I just had happened to have a lot of commitments uh, the last couple of weeks. All right, so on the 23rd, the, the, uh, the, we need to settle accounts. We need to pay that, that amount. And our salary only comes in on the 25th. So I was like, how? How, uh? how am I going to pay that? I mean, it's, it could be as simple as, 
sorry, um, Pastor Sam Kiong, I think I can't make it for the retreat because I cannot pay. Of course, it's not going to happen, right? Um, I'm also another pastor in, in workplace at the river. He's not going to allow that to happen. But I could make some other arrangements. But you know what happened? Right there and then, out of the blue, somebody says, Joel, I want to give you a love gift. I'm like, what? What's this for? Why? And that love gift was more than enough to cover that amount that we needed to pay for the retreat, you know. So I, I really praise God for little things like this. Why don't we praise God together with me, right? Because it's something simple, but it's something that I've experienced for myself. And this is what the, the priest uh, uh, can do. He can share in the sacrifice of the people. And that's the sacrifice. But I want to move on to the next part. In verse 9, we're going to jump down a little bit to verse 9. It says, When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or cast spells, or who is a medium, or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord because of, the, of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. You know, now the Lord is asking them and is reminding them to be blameless. You know why the, the verse says or the passage says, says blameless and not sinless? Because it, it means to be free from blame, not to be free from sin. And this is why uh, it says in Romans 3.23, it says this, um, all have sinned and, and fall short of the glory of God, right? All have sinned. That means all of us, including myself, we all have sinned. In other words, there is actually no one on earth who is completely sinless except for Jesus. And Jesus is the only one who is completely sinless. But we, as human beings, we can be blameless, right? We can be without blame. And, you know, this is more than just God calling us to walk as a holy person. This is a warning to to stay away from any involvement in the occult, right? Any detestable practices, let's completely stay away from it. And it's dangerous for us to be involved in any kind of occultic practices. Um, you know, no matter how, how seemingly harmless it is, I don't know how many of you may have heard of the spirit of the coin, right? Uh, uh, some people play it in their, in their high schools. Or the Ouija board, right? Um, hiring mediums, um, speaking to the dead, even if it's our own an ancestors. Well, don't get me wrong. We do honour our ancestors. We, we respect them. We remember them, all their sacrifice and their blessing uh, towards us. But we don't pray to them. We don't call them up to, to the, from the dead. We don't speak to them. And, you know, some of us may be doing this just for fun. Uh, you know, I, uh, just, just do, just do an you know, it's, it's just for fun. But actually, the devil is no gentleman. If you give him an inch, he will take a mile. And that's who the devil is. And I want to encourage us, let's steer clear, not just encourage, but warn us. Let's steer clear completely of all these things, all these, these practices. So even as I was reading this, I asked myself, you know, why do people get involved in all these type of things, the, the occult? You know, mediums, fortune-telling, uh, uh, sorcery, witchcraft, soothsayers. Why do people get involved in these type of things? And it's a simple reason in my mind. It's, it's just because we want to know the future. We want to know what's ahead. We want to know what's our fortune like. Do we have good fortune or bad fortune? What's going to happen to us? What is... What is going to happen in our life? What is something that we need to look out for? I want to prepare for every single thing in my life. And let's look at what the Lord says about that. You know, um, uh, uh, in their hearts, humans plan their cause, but the Lord 
establishes their steps. Proverbs 16, 9. You know, I don't want to be a, a hypocrite even as I speak to all of you. I too am a planner. I do want to plan my life. I, I, I want to have a, a plan, uh, an idea of what's going to happen next. In fact, I currently plan my life in 30-minute slots so that my next two weeks, I've, I've got it all planned. And uh, yes, I'm a little bit of a per perfectionist, but it's also so that I know, okay, I need to allocate this much time. I've got this many things to do. Um, I need to complete it in the time allocated and so that I can cover everything that, that needs uh, to be done. And there is a saying uh, in, uh, that I've read before. It says, write your plans in pencil, but give God the eraser. Right? Let me say that again. Write your plans in pencil, but give God the eraser. So always have a room for God to change that plan, to, to do something different, um, you know, for, for people to come in who need ministry, whatever it is, let God have the eraser. And the heart of the matter, the heart of what I'm trying to say today is this. Let's trust in God. Let's put our faith, our hope, our trust in God, not in the predictions, not in the omens, not in, in the, the, the forecast, what's my fortune next year, but let's not worry about what we need to do next, but put everything in God's hand. And I want to encourage us, let's put our faith, our trust in God, even though we don't know the next step. But He created us, He created time, He created space, He knows the next step for us. And you know what? There are certain things that money can't buy. Right? So we can be prepared, we can plan out for, for anything in our life, but there are certain things that really money can, can't buy. And I want to say, let's not come to a point where all we have is God when we need, when we need help, right? So I want to relate a story to uh, all of us right now. So three years ago, around this time, um, it was about July in 2019, my wife Shamin had a miscarriage, right? Um, and don't worry, I've asked, uh, we've discussed this, we've got, I've got permission to share this. And whenever we share this story, um, it is not out of sadness or disappointment. Yes, there's a little bit of disappointment, but, but hear what I'm going to say, what happened through that process. So we went because she started bleeding and then even as she went uh, to the, the, the hospital at that point of time, the, the bleeding stopped and the doctor said, okay, come back in two weeks. All right? So we came back in two weeks and I remember the appointment, it was 2 p.m. On a, on a Tuesday. Right? So we went to the, the hospital at that time and of all days and of all times, right when we went to the hospital, she suddenly felt uh, pain. She suddenly felt like there was this sharp pain in her. And I was like, are you sure? Are you serious? Just now, you're completely fine. You know, I, we drove all the way here. You, you were fine. But suddenly, she felt a really sharp pain. And right then, I called the nurse uh, to, to come up and, and help us. And, she, and the nurse said, are, are you okay? She said, no, I'm in pain. And the nurse you know, we didn't need to wait at all. She brought us all the way to the front of the, 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 the line. Um, and then we were, she was able to go through this, this procedure where um, uh, basically the, the fetus was, was removed, you know. Uh, normally, people do this procedure called the DNC. It's not divide and conquer, all right? It's, it's uh, dilation and curatage, okay? So it's a DNC procedure, but we didn't need to go through that because... Um, uh, the product of conception, it came out naturally. And we're thinking to ourselves, how on earth did it happen? Because a lot of the stories that we hear, we hear people bleeding in their workplace, uh, you know, in the toilet. But this happened right on the appoint appointment day. How can that be? Why don't we give God some praise, you know? Isn't God awesome? And, you know, this whole thing about trusting God trusting God's timing, it's like how we look at a GPS. How many of you, you, have, you, you refer to Waze or Google Maps, you know, to get around? Yeah, a lot of us, right? And it's always one step at a time. At the roundabout, turn, take the first exit, right? In 100 meters, turn left. It's always one step at a time. Um, not many of us 
look all the way to the end of the, 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 the thing. We just key in our final destination and then we're like, okay, we'll just follow it, right? And there's been a lot of people that drive into lakes, that drive into rivers, that drive into dead ends, uh, and, and just end up getting stuck in the process. If that's one of you, uh, please don't, don't need to show your hands, all right? But it's, it's actually, it's, I mean, I've not driven into a lake, but I've got stuck. I have driven into a dead end multiple times. If we can trust the GPS so much, why can't we trust in God? Because what He's doing is guiding us one step at a time, one turn at a time, a little bit, just 100 meters at a time. I want to encourage us, let's put our trust in God. Let's trust Him more than GPS, than Google Maps, than Waze, because, and more than even our finances, more than the circumstance that we are in, because His plans are the best plans for us. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So indeed, the Lord has plans for us. Amen? And that's the second one. I'm oh, sorry, that's the third one. I want to move into the last item for today. And it's this in verse 15. It says this, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on that day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. And this is a reminder, this is in Deuteronomy, that the Lord will raise up a prophet just like Moses. Moses is the one who wrote Deuteronomy, and it's going to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. And this just like Moses came out as a person from Israel, he was a Hebrew, this prophet would be someone that came out uh, from, from Israel. Well, we know who it is. He came out from, from Jerusalem. He would be one of them. This prophet will be a mediator. He will be a connection between, the man, between man and God and between God and man. And he would be one that speaks God's word. And this prophet was one that would be raised up. And this prophet, does anybody know who this prophet is? is? It's Jesus, right? Jesus. And the reason he's called a prophet, and that's why, that's why there's actually another faith that calls Jesus Nabi, Nabi Isa, a prophet, the prophet Jesus. But we know he is the Son of God. And when it comes to prophets, when it comes to prophecy, people bringing the words, word, word of God, we need to be extra careful with prophecy. I want to encourage us, let's, let's not chase after prophecies. It's not wrong to hear a prophecy, but let's not be ones that chase after prophecies because there are some prophets who are false prophets. And they would always, uh, they would generally start with, the Lord told me, wow. So chim, right? I mean, even as, as a, a pastor, a minister of the Lord, sometimes I myself, I'm not entirely sure whether it's from the Lord. So if someone says, the Lord told me, we got no choice but to listen to them, but we, we should question whether what they say is really true. You know, some may genuinely hear from the Lord, but the other part of the story is, it, could, it may not be the exact right time for us to hear that prophecy. It may not be the word that the Lord has commanded us to, uh, to, to speak at that point of time. How do we know if someone is a false prophet or a true prophet? How do we know? The simple test is, does what they prophesy come to pass or not? Simple, right? And, and uh, if the prophecy does not happen, does not come to pass, yeah, you can say, Yep, maybe that person is, is a, a, a false prophet. He may, he, may, he may be claiming to say what the Lord is saying to him, but he may be false. But how should we go about prophecies that we hear? How should we go about, because there's a lot of prophecies, um, whether it's face-to-face, -face, there is a bunch of online prophecies, 
How should we go about it? In 1 Thessalonians, it says this, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 20. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. So how we should respond to prophecies? Test them. Test them to see whether it is true or false. And I want to remind us here, um, let's not judge the prophecy. Let's not, you know, uh, uh, that belongs to, to the Lord. The whole area of judging belongs to the Lord. But let us test the prophecy. You know, um, and that's about the spoken word. So today I've shared with us a few things um, about this passage. There's been the sufficiency, the share of the sacrifice, the solemn warning, and the spoken word. And do you know that there is a similarity among all these things, or most of these things? And that is, all these things affect the future. What is coming up next? What is coming up tomorrow? The future, or what, if, what is in front of us, is something unknown, is something uncertain. Right now, you and I, all of us here, we are living in a time that is very uncertain. I'm going to give us a couple of examples. So, we may be in a transition to endemic phase in terms of COVID. But there's actually a food shortage going on. You can barely even buy chicken, right? Uh, or chicken is, is such a scarcity. The prices have risen tremendously. The Russia-Ukraine war is still ongoing. Many of the food supplies are stuck. Oil prices are skyrocketing. And there's even not enough oil being produced. Even very recently, cryptocurrency experienced a crash. And there is a lot of, of saying that, say, uh, and speculation that says, oh, it's okay, whatever goes down is definitely coming up. But do you know for sure that that's going to happen? I want to encourage us today. Let's put our future in God's hands. Because amidst all the uncertainty, amidst everything that is happening, amidst us not knowing what the future holds, amidst us not knowing what's going to happen next, God is the only constant. God is the only thing that is sure and that He's the only thing that is certain. Amen? Amen? Today I've just talked about Christ is enough. I've just talked about this whole thing, uh, this, this whole sharing about Christ is enough. The question for us is, how do we know for ourselves that Christ is is enough. Let's do a, a, a health check or a heart check to see, is Christ really enough for, for ourselves, for me? And the first thing I want to encourage us to do is, do we really trust in God? Do we really trust in God? And this is about not your own abilities, not your own skills, not your own talents. It's not even about your own gifting. But do you really trust God's Word that's in the Bible and the Word that He's speaking to you? Do you really trust God? The next one is this. It's faith in God. Faith is something that is not seen. A lot of us, we rely on our five senses. We, if we can taste it, we can see it, we can smell it, we can hear it. Yes, it's true. But faith in God, we can't even see God. And that's where it comes in. That's where we need to have faith. Not just in what we can see, not our circumstance, but in God. And thirdly is this, we need to hope in God. And what that means is, let's not trust in our bank account. It's important, but let's not put our trust in it. Let's not put our trust in the plans that we have. The, the two-week plan that I have, right? Every half an hour. The, the one-month plan, the one-year plan, things have been so uh, volatile lately. There's so many things that are changing. Let's not trust even, let's not put our hope even in our, our spouse, our children, but let our hope be in God. You know, once I heard this saying, and I want to say it to all of us, I want to I encourage us to come to that posture 
where we can say this. You know, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how I'm going to get there. But I know who I'm going with. I'm going with Jesus. And that's my prayer for all of us today, that we would go together with Jesus. We would trust in Him. We would put our faith in Him. We would put our, our hope in Him. And after I've, I've shared all this, you may be asking me, how does all this affect me? I'm not a priest. I'm not a pastor. I'm not even in full-time ministry. How does it affect me? I'm just a regular person. Um, uh, you could be a homemaker. You could be working out there. But I want to show you how it affects all of us here. In 1 Peter 2 verse 9, it says, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. So my friends, whether or not you're in full-time ministry, whether you receive a salary from church or the portion uh, uh, from, uh, uh, of the Levites, we are all priests of the kingdom of God. We are all priests in one way or another. Whether in our workplace, whether it's for those of us who are studying in the place of our study, whether you're a homemaker, whether you, you run a multinational business, let's all come to the point to say we are all priests of the kingdom of God. You know, as I close, I want to remind uh, us about something. I want to share this. And this comes from a very famous company. Co comes from Coca-Cola. The former CEO of Coca-Cola, yeah, his name is Roberto Goizieta, once said, I get paid to make the owners of the Coca-Cola company increasingly wealthy with each passing day. Everything else is fluff. And this is a representation of the world we live in, what, what the focus of the world we are living in right now. But there was this seminary professor who said this, the real test of progress is how we love God and our neighbour. Everything else is fluff. Everything else is fluff. You know, we, we live in a world where the, the world around us says amassing wealth, having a lot of money, uh, being successful, uh, uh, you know, all those things, there's nothing wrong with that. But that is the measure of success. But the Lord says something different, something completely different. And He says, find what you need in me. Trust in me. Put your faith in me. Put your hope in me. And I want to encourage all of us today that all of us come to that point to say, if Christ is all I have, I have all I need. Amen? Amen? I want to make a call for us, but I want to encourage all of us to just bow our heads and, and uh, close our eyes for just a moment. I've got a call for a, a bunch of people here. No one looking around. This is a very solemn moment. Even as I've talked about Christ being enough. And honestly, it's something that I'm learning about day after day for myself. But I want to ask, if there is anyone here, you've heard of Jesus, you've heard of Christ, you may have um, uh, heard about someone else talking about Him, but today, you have not known Him for yourself. You have yet to know the Lord as your personal Lord and Saviour. I want to encourage you to just slip up your hands just for a moment so that we can see you. If that is you, you want to make Christ as your Lord and Saviour. You want to say, Christ, you are enough for me. Christ, I want to believe in you. 
And if that is you, I want to encourage you to just slip up your hands. Don't worry, there's nobody looking around. But the Lord wants to meet you. The Lord wants to be your sufficiency. The Lord wants to be your provider. The Lord wants to bless you. The Lord wants to be with you. So if that is you today, can I encourage you to just raise your hands? See you at the balcony. One up on the balcony. Amen. Is there anybody else you would like to call Jesus your Lord, your Saviour? You've been coming to church for a while, but you want to accept Jesus today. Today is your chance. It's your divine appointment. Can I invite you? Amen. Brother, there'll be one of our pastors who come and minister to you um, even in, in this time. And I want to congratulate you. I want to welcome you into the family of God. And I want to go into the next group of people. And, and this is, is a, a group, you know, I've just been talking about Christ being enough. Christ being enough. And you're listening to it today and you're hearing um, about how the Lord Jesus Christ was enough for all the priests, for all um, uh, the ministers. But I want to encourage you because the Lord is enough for you. And if that is you today, I want to encourage you to just rise to your feet to say, Lord, from today, I want to say that you are enough for me. Not my bank account, not my family, not the things around me, not, not my finances, not my plans, but you. And if that is you today, can I encourage you to just stand up to your feet, just rise to your feet to say, God, if all I have is you, I have all I need. Amen. If that's you, why don't you just rise to your feet? Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are our sufficiency. Lord, you are provider. Lord, even as you provided for all the priests, you will provide for all of us. Lord, I thank you, God, that we want to put our faith, our hope, our trust in you. Not our abilities, not our talents, not our skills but in you and you alone because you know us through and through. You know us inside out. So God, I pray for each and every one of us here today. Lord, I pray for those who have made a special commitment today to say, Christ, Jesus, I want to follow you. Lord, let it be true in my, in my life. Let it be, be the fact of my life that you and you alone will be enough for me, for all my needs, those that are physical, emotional, and mental. So God, we want to thank you and praise you. And Lord, even as we separate from each other today, Lord, that you would bless us and be with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you shalom. Amen. Amen.